In this exercise, we would like to evaluate a scalar surface integral where the scalar integrand is the function f of x, y, and z equals x times z. And we are integrating over the surface s, which is the upper hemisphere of radius 3. I'm going to do this two different ways. The first way will be with spherical coordinates, which I think is the most natural way to parametrize s because it's an upper hemisphere. And then the second way, just if you're curious, we will use cylindrical coordinates. So the first thing we need for this problem is a parametrization of s. So I'm going to do this with spherical coordinates. Spherical coordinates, you think of rho, theta, and phi, but rho here is the constant 3. The radius is not changing for our sphere. However, we do have both angular coordinates. So those are going to be the parameters u and v. So my x coordinate for this parametrization will be 3 cosine of u, that's like theta, sine of v, that's like phi. Then for y, 3 sine of u, sine of v. And then for z, 3 cosine of v. For this sphere, we have the entire upper hemisphere. We're not just in the first octant or anything like that. So u will go from 0 to 2 pi. On the other hand, we are only going from the north pole down to the equator. So v will go from 0 to pi over 2. Where at the entire sphere, v would go from 0 to pi. If my integrand is the function little f of x, y, and z is x times z, then I want to evaluate f on this parametrization. So I want to plug it in and say, what is f of r of u and v? It's the product of the first coordinate and the third coordinate. So that's going to be 9 cosine u cosine v sine v. OK, the next piece of the integrand we need is the length of the cross product of the vectors I call r sub u and r sub v. So we want the length of the vector whose components are the partial derivatives of the components of the parametrization with respect to u. So that's going to be negative 3 sine of u sine of v, 3 cosine of u sine of v, and 0. Going to cross that with a vector I'll write directly below to make the cross product easier. Now take the partial derivatives with respect to v. We get 3 cosine of u cosine of v, 3 sine of u cosine of v, negative 3 sine of v. I'm going to take the cross product now, and I'm also going to notice that both of these vectors have a 3 in every single coordinate, or I can factor 3 out. So I'm going to factor out 3 from the first one, 3 from the second one. That gives me 9 in front. So I'll put 9 out here. Then I'm going to do cosine u sine v times negative sine v minus sine u cosine v times 0. So that goes away. So the first coordinate in our cross product is going to be negative cosine of u sine of v squared, so sine squared v. Similarly, the second coordinate is going to be 0 times something. That goes away. And then overall, negative sine of u sine squared of v. Then the third coordinate will initially look large, but we will be able to simplify it a lot. That's going to be this sine sine times sine cosine minus cosine cosine times cosine sine. Okay, I'm going to write it out all on one line. We'll have the sine of u squared, so sine squared u, sine v cosine v. And actually, that should have been negative. Minus cosine squared of u, cosine v sine v. All right, so let's simplify that third coordinate. I'm going to have 9 times the length of negative cosine of u sine of v squared, so sine squared v, negative sine of u sine squared v. And then because of the sine squared u and cosine squared u, we can use the Pythagorean identity to just write this third coordinate as negative sine of v times cosine of v.
I'm going to do one more thing before I compute the length, and that is pull a sine v out of every coordinate. I have that expression squared in the first two coordinates and by itself in the third coordinate. Sine of v is always greater than or equal to zero on a sphere because v is between zero and pi. For our upper hemisphere, we're between zero and pi over two. Regardless, sine of v won't be negative. So I can pull that in front and say nine sine of v times the length of negative cosine of u sine of v, negative sine of u sine of v, negative cosine of v. Okay, now we are ready to actually take the length of this vector. What I'm going to do is erase all of these preliminary steps so that we can try to fit everything on one slide. Okay, so we have the nine sine of v that hangs out front times the square root of cosine squared u sine squared v plus sine squared u sine squared v plus cosine squared v. The first two expressions simplify to just sine squared v because of the Pythagorean identity here with the cosine squared u and sine squared u. But now we have the square root of the sine of v, that quantity squared plus cosine squared v, that's also one. So overall this entire root is one. So the length of this cross product is nine sine of v. That it would reduce down to being something so simple is not surprising because these are spherical coordinates on a sphere. They're designed to simplify. Okay, so now we can set up and say that this scalar surface integral can be computed by doing a double integral where we'll have u go from zero to two pi, v go from zero to pi over two. The product of the quantities in steps two and three. So nine cosine of u, cosine of v, sine of v. And then we pick up another nine sine of v. So actually let me write sine of v squared. And I'll make this 981 dv du. You can work this out, but I'm just going to say that we have one u expression here, a cosine of u, being evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. When it comes time to anti-differentiate with respect to u, We'll have sine of u evaluated at two pi and zero. Those quantities are both zero. In other words, integrating cosine of u from u equals zero to u equals two pi is like saying how much area is enclosed between the graph of the cosine function and the x-axis uh, for one full revolution of the cosine function. So you have the same amount of positive and negative area. The overall answer is gonna be zero. Okay, so that wraps up this integral done with spherical coordinates. Let's do the whole thing all over again, but with cylindrical coordinates. Okay, we'll have the same steps. It's just our parametrization will be different if we do this with cylindrical coordinates. So for cylindrical coordinates, we wanna realize that the upper hemisphere of radius three casts a shadow down on the xy plane, which is a solid disk of radius three. So we have a radial coordinate and an angular coordinate for our x and y. So we'll say x is u cosine v, y is u sine of v, and then z will be the square root of nine minus u squared. That's converting the equation z equals the square root of nine minus x squared minus y squared with cylindrical coordinates. So that equation is the equation of the upper hemisphere of radius three written with x, y, and z. So you plug in for x and y, and you would get z is the square root of nine minus u squared. u here is the radius. So u is gonna go from zero to three, and v is gonna go from zero to two pi. 
when we plug the parameterization into our function, we get the product of the first coordinate and the third coordinate. So that's going to be u cosine of v times the square root of 9 minus u squared. We need to take the cross product of those two vectors. This time r sub u is going to be cosine of v, sine of v, and then the square root of 9 minus u squared is like 9 minus u squared to the 1 half. So 1 over 2 drops down, and we get the square root of 9 minus u squared times a half times negative 2u, so it would be negative u. Okay, so that's the first vector in our cross product. We need to cross that with the second vector where we take the partial derivatives with respect to v. That's going to look like negative u sine of v, u cosine of v, and then 0. Okay, when we cross them, we get this times this minus this times this. I think I can do that here. That's going to leave us with u squared cosine of v divided by the square root of 9 minus u squared. Then this times this minus this times this. So that's u squared sine of v divided by that square root. And then the third coordinate is u cosine squared of v minus negative u sine squared of v. So that's a u cosine squared plus u sine squared. That's just u. We have a u in every coordinate. So I'm going to pull that u in front. And I'm also going to notice that u is between 0 and 3. So it's greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to say that this is u times the length of u cosine v divided by the square root, u sine v divided by the square root, and 1. Let me go ahead and do that in the radical. So we'll have u squared cosine squared of v divided by 9 minus u squared plus u squared sine squared of v divided by 9 minus u squared plus 1 squared. Let me take that plus 1 and write that as plus 9 minus u squared divided by 9 minus u squared. So that now this length is going to be u times the square root of u squared cosine squared plus u squared sine squared is u squared plus 9 minus u squared. Overall, the numerator is 9. And the denominator is 9 minus u squared. OK, so that's going to be, let's see, we can write it one more time as 3u divided by the square root of 9 minus u squared. Okay, we have everything we need now to set up and evaluate this integral. So our scalar surface integral, xz evaluated over this upper hemisphere of radius 3, computationally, we can write this as the integral from 0 to 3, the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the product of the terms in steps 2 and 3. We'll have the square roots cancel out. So in step 2, I had square root of 9 minus u squared. And in step 3, we divided by the square root of 9 minus u squared. So those go away. And then we will have 3 u squared cosine of v. dv du. Once again, integrating cosine of v from 0 to 2 pi is 0. So same result as before.